Hi, my name is Bernd Herd and I'm working as Technical Marketing Engineer at NetApp's SAP Competence Center in Waldorf. Together with my colleague Niels Bauer, we have held a webinar at brighttalk.com to show why SAP HANA runs better on NetApp. In this video, we want to focus on the third topic of this webinar, SAP System Refresh. You can watch the full video at brighttalk.com. The full webinar has three major topics, backup and recovery, disaster recovery, and SAP system refresh. Now listen to Niels Bauer explaining SAP HANA system refresh. Okay, thanks for it. So, um, yeah, within Within the solution overview and also uh, within the disaster recovery section, Bern talked about several use cases and scenarios like logical corruption or DR testing, where existing snapshot backups are used as a basis for the provisioning of a new SAP system. And within this section, I want to talk about another use case, the SAP system refresh. In most cases, uh, SAP system refresh operation is executed to load data from the production system into a test or QA system. And executing quality assurance tests depend on accurate data. And it is, therefore, it is important to do the system refresh of a test or QA system on a regular basis. On the other hand, system refresh operations are often manual operations they are quite time consuming and therefore they are not executed as often as required. Okay, when we look at the workflow of an SAP system refresh operations, there are actually three main steps. First, there is an initial one-time preparation of the target system, which is the installation of the HANA database and the SAP application. And with a standard approach, the second step is a redirected restore of the source database to the target system. And with a file-based backup, this restore operation will typically take multiple hours, of course, depending on the size of the database. The next step is the SAP post-processing, which can also be very time-consuming when it is executed manually. And there are third-party products to automate the SAP post-processing, for example, uh, the SAP landscape management, uh, which Bernd has already mentioned, where we also have an integration uh, with, with our storage technology. And after the SAP post-processing, the system is used as a test or QA system, and for example, after three months, another system refresh is executed. And that brings us back to the redirected restore operation. So now let's have a look at a different approach executing the system refresh operation. So on the left side of this architecture picture, we can see uh, our source system for the refresh operation. And as discussed in the backup and recovery section, storage snapshots has been created for this source database. And the system on the right side should be our target system. It has been installed once, so we do have on the storage layer a shared file system and a file system, a volume uh, for the database log. And the system refresh operation now consists of three main steps. First, a flex clone copy is created on the storage layer based on a snapshot backup from the source system. And the volume is in the next step mounted at the target host. And with the, <coughs> sorry, with the third step, uh, a database recovery is executed, which will also change the SID of the target database. So in these steps can now be automated using SnapCenter. So within SnapCenter, there are two workflows which are used to execute the SAP system refresh operation. The first workflow is the clone create workflow, which actually covers the three steps that we discussed before. 
Now SAP post-processing must be executed again as a manual operation or automated using third-party tools. And when the next system refresh operation is executed, the clone delete workflow within SnapCenter needs to be executed, followed by another clone create workflow. So um, when we look at the more details of these workflows, the clone create workflow that we discussed on the slide before um, executes the storage clone operation. Uh, in the second step, uh, it executes the mount operation at the target host, so the cloned volume is mounted at the target host. And in the third step, uh, the recovery of the HANA database is executed. The clone delete workflow, the second blue box, um, is actually used to shut down the target system, to unmount the storage volume from the target host, and then in a third step, the clone is deleted on the storage layer. And so now you can execute these workflows, the clone create and clone delete workflow, either um, within the SnapCenter UI, that's one option, or you can also use PowerShell commands to automate uh, the, the workflow and to provide all the required input. So um, this is, uh, again, the uh, topology view of, uh, of a HANA database. And we, we can see here, uh, again, the, the local backups and the backups at the off-site backup site. And you can now select any of these storage systems, so primary or off-site backup storage, um, to and execute the cloning operation, meaning that your dev test system can either run on the same primary storage as your production system, or uh, you can use the offsite backup storage, so the um, SnapVault target, uh, as a storage system to run your development and test system. This is actually quite common in, in our customer base that the backup storage is used as a storage for running the development and test systems. And um, by selecting one of the storage systems, you can see again the list of the existing backups, and you select one of the backups uh, which you want to use as a basis for your system refresh operation. So within the, within the um, workflow dialog, you need to provide um, the, the IP address of the uh, on the target host where you want to mount that flex clone volume. The target host um, has to run the HANA plugin, so you need to deploy that HANA plugin at the target host. And in the second step of the workflow, uh, you can provide external scripts to execute the mount operation and to execute the recover operation at the target host. So this slide, or this output, shows the, the log file of the mount and recovery script, and I just highlighted the three main steps here in blue, which is first one mounting the data volume, then recovery of the system database. So this example is a, um, a MDC, and HANA MDC single tenant uh, system, so we need to recover the system database followed by the recovery of the tenant database. And I also highlighted the, uh, the start and the end time of the execution. So in, in, in total, it took around four minutes uh, to, to mount the volume and to recover the database. Of course, uh, recovery time depends on the size of the database and um, even, even more important, the uh, amount of column data that you, that you load into memory. So this is uh, just a small system here. Uh, where we have been able to execute this in, in less than four minutes. So here we see the workflow of the clone delete operation, or the, the screenshot here. Um, so uh, the, the clone will be shown within SnapCenter, and then you select the clone and push the delete button. And then, uh, as, as we discussed before, 
uh, you can use external scripts now to uh, to execute the shutdown and the unmount operation on the on the target host. And I said the operations, the workflows can be executed either within the UI or using PowerShell. So these are the two PowerShell commands uh, that can be used to create a clone and uh, to delete a clone. And you can see here also that all the external scripts for mounting, for recovery, for um, shutdown, and for unmount are also uh, provided here in the PowerShell script. So the PowerShell command list would allow you to fully automate that operation without the need to touch the, uh, the touch the UI. Thanks for watching part three of the series SAP HANA runs better on NADA. You may watch the full webinar at brighttalk.com. And for those of you visiting Sapphire in Orlando, you can meet all the NetApp experts at booth number 108.